new electronics hit the market faster than you can say multi-core processor. Faster computers, smarter phones and smaller iPods. Professor Kofi Makinwa of Delft University of Technology is one of the masterminds that help make our lives more comfortable and more fun. My interest in electronics started out very young. I remember that sometime, must have been about 10, I got this build your own radio kit and I found it very interesting and I tried to follow all the instructions and make, build a radio and it never, it didn't work and I spent maybe about six months trying to figure out why it wasn't working and then just once I heard something I picked up a radio station and I remember that moment that's the Eureka moment. That's when you've built something, just a bunch of wires, and then it works. It's like magic. And after that, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to be an electrical engineer. Now, the main focus of my research is the development of smart sensors. And these are basically sensors that are realized on a silicon chip. Sensors are form the natural bridge between the real world and the world of computers. Some try to make chips that can sense things, that can process the information, and then trans transmit them the, the information to a computer, all in one. The main focus of my work right now is on thermal sensors. And what we try and do is um, we try and design temperature sensors in silicon that are both accurate and capable of operating over a wide temperature range. And you might be thinking, yeah, temperature sensors, that sounds a little bit boring. But well, you can do more exciting things with temperature sensors, or actually thermal sensors. You can use them to measure wind. And how would you do that? Well, you can use um, the same principle by which we sense wind. We stick a finger in the wind. And because your finger is equipped with a lot of temperature sensors, you can feel those temperature differences. And you can estimate how hard the wind is blowing and from which direction the wind is blowing. Now imagine, if you could make this electronically, so you could make a sensor that can detect wind speed with the extra advantage, it doesn't have any moving parts, which makes it very robust and also fairly cheap. So we made this experimentally, so that was great. But what was even better was that in the course of this research, we had to understand how the heat was spreading in the silicon chip. And what we found out was that the way heat spreads through a silicon chip is very well defined. But the, the key thing is that heat spreads through silicon slowly. So there's a time delay involved. And if you can make a, a well-defined, a reproducible time delay, you have the key ingredient to make a time reference. So the combination of a time reference on a silicon chip would be a huge breakthrough. And that's actually the most exciting part of my research today. So we, we test our sensors by exposing them to the things they're supposed to sense. So for instance, in a temperature sensor, we test that by putting it into a giant pizza oven, which can regulate the temperature from, let's say, very cold, minus 70 degrees, up to very hot, 170 degrees. In order to test a wind sensor, we have to expose it to wind. Now, it's not very convenient to hang around waiting until it's uh, forced in, uh, because that almost never happens. So what we do is we put our sensors into a wind tunnel. And what a wind tunnel is, it's a huge pipe with a huge fan on one side that blows the air at a controlled rate past the sensor. And we put the wind sensor in that wind tunnel and we um, observe its reaction to different wind speeds and to different wind directions. And we record all of that and we compare it against a reference a reference wind sensor to make sure that our sensor is performing uh, properly. As an engineer, uh, my ultimate goal is to make sensors that will be used in real products. And um, we've been relatively successful in that. So for instance, when you're watching a movie on your laptop and you hear the fan coming on, it's because a temperature sensor, and perhaps one of ours, is basically has told the system that the, that the microprocessor is getting too hot and the fan needs to come on. Yeah, when does research finish? Well, actually never, because there's always something to improve, 
there are always new insights that you gain. The wind sensor was a very good example. We started out with the goal of making a finger-like wind sensor, and we succeeded, but with a new insight, it led to something completely different. Um, that's, the, that's the joy of research. It's the, it's the creativity, it's the freedom, it's um, the knowledge that tomorrow there's always going to be something exciting to do.